All right, everybody. So here's what we're going to do for the next hour. Um, this is going to be a little bit more nuts and bolts. We're going to be talking about the program, about the classes that you can take, about some of the ground rules. Uh, we'll be talking about internships. Um, this is also going to be different from the first half in the sense that all of you were pretty much silent and it's people up here who are talking, which is most unlike any JMSC class. So we'll try and get the classroom experience a little bit more. And so feel free, put up your hands, talk. If you have a question, ask it. Um, it's what journalism is about. It's about asking questions. And if you can't ask questions, you're not going to be a very good journalist, I'm, I'm afraid to say. So start practicing right now. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to talk about the MJ program itself. I'm going to talk about plagiarism. And it's not going to be me talking. We're going to talk together about this. Um, then we are going to talk about the internships, about our tech policy, and we're going to hear from our alums. And at half past 12, we will break for lunch, and each one of you will be having lunch with your, advise, uh, with your advisors, as well as other faculty member, members, and it'll be an occasion for you to get to know each other better. Okay? Right, I'm going to talk a little bit about the broad outlines of the program itself. The MJ program, to graduate you need a minimum of 33 credits, that is 11 courses. You can take more, you can take up to 12, but 11 is what you need to graduate, 11 is what most people take, right? Um, of these 11, there are six compulsory courses and five electives. You will take these over two full semesters and one summer mini semesters. You notice that I put the mini in inverted commas and that's for a reason. It, mini makes it sound as though it's really small, short, but it's not. It's extremely intensive. It's really, you do a full semester's work in one month, all right? Um, so. Some ba basic maths will tell you that you take five courses each semester, plus one course in the mini semester, that's 10 plus one, which makes your quota of 11. Now, what are we going to be doing in the first semester? Let me put all of these out in the first. Right. The first semester really is con concentrates, you'll be doing more compulsory courses than you will do in the next two semesters. And why is that? Because we try and give you a good grounding in basic journalistic tools. And this also helps you when you go on to do your internships in, in, in December. So it's a very, very focused semester on learning the basic tools, not just learning them, but using these basic tools. So you do reporting and writing, online journalism, broadcast journalism, critical issues in journalism, which is the big sort of think course in which we think about the role of the journalist in society, and you will do um, video production. Now being observant journalists, you may have noticed that video production is in italics in a slightly different font, um, and the reason it looks slightly different is because this is offered in both semesters, right? So some of you will do this in the first semester, but actually the bulk of you will be doing this in the second semester, right? So here's where we are. Um, I'm not going to talk about the individual uh, classes or courses because You've got the whole of next week, really, to meet instructors, and you learn a lot more about the courses. But this is just a quick, quick overview. So this is the compulsory. These are the compulsory courses you're going to be taking, the basic tools of journalism. In addition, you will be able to take, most of you will be able to take one elective course. Um, and the ones that are, um, are, are on offer are readings in China Media and Society, which Ying Chan will be offering, environmental communication, which Miklos is teaching, and interpreting and using business journalism in a global er, um, era, which Jeff talked to you about, but which will be taught by Jerry Doyle. Um, 
most of you will be able to take one elective now. Those of you who take the video course this semester will not be able to take an elective, right? Instead, you will take more electives in the second semester. So this is some of the planning that you're going to need to do, and this is what your advisors are here for as well. So you can talk about it over lunch, meet your advisors, and they will help you to sort of plan and decide, should I do this now, should I do this later, and so on and so forth, okay? Is that clear? Questions? Okay, let's move on then. You are going to be busy. Um, and this, I tell you from the experience of every batch that has passed through. There's f you take five courses, each of them require three hours of classroom attendance, right? So that's 15 hours. Each class, in turn, is going to require a minimum, and I repeat, a minimum of another three hours of work, okay? So that 15 plus 15 is 30. Most of them, you will require more than three hours. I mean, if you're doing hands-on courses and the online course, if you're doing reporting and writing, you'll be going out, talking to people, writing stories. All of that takes a lot of time, so you are going to be busy. This is a very intensive course because we try to cram in, in nine months, what many graduate programs do over two years. And why do we do this? Because most people are eager to learn quickly and get out into the job market or get back into the job market. And so we find that this is really what works. And very few people really have the, um, the, 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 the luxury, if you will, of taking two years off and studying in a very leisurely pace. So this is really intense. But don't worry, as 15 batches have discovered or 14 batches before you have discovered, everybody, you can do it, right? So once more, the aim of the um, first semester really is to introduce you to the basic tools that you need to be a journalist. And that is reporting, writing, online skills, and video skills for um, those of you who take that course. Now in the second semester, you will do two compulsory courses. One is media law, which um, Doreen spoke to you about, and the other is video production for those of who did not do it in the first semester. And that's actually going to be the bulk, the majority of you, um, I think. Um, video production, by the way, is taught by um, Rob McBride, who is a very um, experienced journalist. He's the correspondent for Al Jazeera in the, um, here. He's also does his own production work and so on and so forth, so he will be the one uh, teaching you video production. And in addition, you will be able to take up to four electives, right? And when I say up to four electives, um, those of you who have already done your video production will be able to take four electives. Those of you who have not will be able to take, um, sorry, four plus one, five. Um, that's right, sorry. Will be able, those of you who are doing video production will be able to take three electives, right? And um, I'm not going to go into the electives. You, looked at, you know, you've got the course outline, you've seen the courses, we'll be happy to talk about them later. You can talk to individual um, instructors about the electives that they are offering. And in May, you will have one elective um, over the summer, and by the 31st of May, you'd have finished your coursework. 2nd of September, 2013, to the 31st of May, 2014. That's what it's going to take you. That's the journey that you're going to travel. Now, let me explain a little bit about the specializations. Um, Jeff had mentioned them to you briefly, um, but in addition to your basic MJ diploma, um, you can also, if you take three courses in particular areas, you can also get an additional certificate from us saying that you have taken three courses in this area. Now, the areas that are on offer are China. There are three courses in China, for those of you who are interested in China studies. Um, 
three courses in business, and then there's health, science, and the environment. Uh, Miklos teaches the envi environmental communication. I teach health and science reporting. So um, if you're interested in one of these areas, if you feel you want to do this, go ahead and get the specialization, but it's not necessary. There are many people who say, oh, I'm interested in business, but I just want to take one business course. That's fine. Or I'm interested in China, but I just want to take one of these courses. I don't want to do three China courses. That's fine as well. Right? But if you feel that I really want to be a business journalist, that's what I'm looking for, or I really want to work in, I want to be a science journalist, or I want to specialize in China, maybe you should start looking at specializations. And once more, talk to your advisor about it, talk to the people teaching the courses, and they can help you to plan your studies. Um, that's it. This is the broad outline, and I'm not, I'm not going to talk about the courses you do in spring. I'm not going to talk about the electives. In spring, we'll have, we'll have another occasion to talk about your spring courses. Um, and this is just the big picture. Do you have any questions? Is everything crystal clear? Yeah. April, right? Uh, okay. Yeah. How come many of the courses on the syllabus book are not um, available for us to select? We've got a whole bunch of courses on the syllabus book, and they depend, firstly, many of them are taught by adjuncts. We get experts from different areas to come and teach them, right? Um, very often, we've got people who have spent six months or a year with us. We offer that course, and we get really um, experts to do that. When they're not there, we don't offer the courses. It's, it, it's as simple as that. Um, this year, for example, documentary film, we were really fortunate um, last year, and I think this year as well, we're going to have two really good people teaching. One is um, Nancy Tong, and the other is Ruby Yang, who was, um, her, um, who's an Oscar winner in documents. So both of them will be here this coming year, so we will offer these courses. If one of them goes away, then we'll think twice, because unless we get somebody really good, we don't offer the course. So that's why we have, um, you know, these whole, uh, you know, um, this many courses. Um, and But we offer those courses every year that we are confident that we've got somebody really good to teach. Okay? Yes. Corey, right? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, my question, my, uh, thank you. Actually, use the mic. Uh, <laughs> uh, my question is, uh, if you are very interested in a course, but you already have a full schedule this semester, can you audit a class for no credit? Um, ask, talk to the instructor. You're, you can, and it depends um, on the instructor. You know, two things. One is you're unlikely to have the time, right? Um, you may feel at the beginning of the semester, hey, I've got time to sit. But as the semester progresses, you find that you've got less and less time to, to sit in on classes. So that makes it a, a, a problem. But if the instructor says, yes, I don't mind, you come in whenever you want, go ahead and do it, right? I, for one, when people ask me to audit, I say, fine, but I would like you to participate in all the classwork, because otherwise, you know, it's like, you're just like sitting and watching TV, um, and, and, and um, you know, it doesn't really work. I don't think it works very well for the student, and neither does it work well for the class and the instructor, but, but that's just me. So if you feel really passionate about something, saying I'd like to at least learn something about this, go and talk to the instructor, right? I think you guys are hungry or something, right? This is one of the <laughs> you're really quiet. Okay, I'm going to move on now. Um, and I'm going to talk very briefly on the issue of plagiarism. Have each one of you got a booklet from the university on plagiarism? No, it's not in this folder. You should have got it fr gotten it from the Faculty of Social Science. Have you got it? All right, you will get it soon. You need to get it by tomorrow. Apparently, ah, you got it. Can I, can I just take a look at it? A booklet like this. Do you guys have this? All right, you will, by tomorrow, you, you should get it by tomorrow. And this is um, as part of a package that is distributed to you by the Faculty of Social Sciences. If you don't have it, yeah, it's online, but uh, otherwise ask Jason to get a copy. Because uh, you, you need to have this and you need to read it. Open your folders, please. The um, the JMSC folder, 
the black one which says Asian voices, global views, and so on. You will notice that one of the pieces of paper that you need to sign, it's not a piece of paper, it's a declaration that you need to sign, says that you have read and understood what is in that booklet, and that if you violate or if you plagiarize, um, you will have, there will be consequences, right? So take it seriously, and I'm going to explain why in a little while. So I'm going to talk, uh, that's what I'm going to talk about now, the plagiarism part, but do make sure that you get that booklet. Okay, folks, at the risk of being slightly overdramatic, I describe plagiarism as a deadly sin because that's what it is. Um, let's see what the Hong Kong U regulations say as it, describe it. What is plagiarism? Plagiarism, according to the, you know, let me put all of this down first. From our regulations is defined as the unacknowledged use as one's own of work of another person, whether or not such work has been published. And it says, a candidate shall not engage in plagiarism, nor employ, nor seek to employ any other unfair means at examination or in any other form of work submitted for assessment as part of university examination. What does all of that mean? Basically, it means that you take somebody else's work, you cut and paste it into your own news story with your name on top of it, that is plagiarism, right? And if you get caught, at the very least, you fail the course. If you fail a course, you probably won't graduate that year. If you do it in more than one course, you go straight up to the university disciplinary committee. At the very least, you get suspended. Normally, you tend to get expelled. Don't do it. And there are two reasons. First of all, within an academic um, framework, copying somebody else's ideas and passing them off as your own, whether it's in a thesis, whether it's in a piece of work for you know, a term paper for a class, is fundamentally dishonest. That's within a university. In journalism, now this is a profession that probably doesn't have very much going for it, right? You don't get paid a huge lot. Um, People often don't think very kindly of us, but we like to think that there are certain fundamental values that we abide by. And one of them is honesty and truthfulness. You take that away from us, from the profession, there's nothing left. We're a bunch of thieves, liars, and cheats, right? This is fundamental to who we are as journalists, which is why we make such a fuss about it, right? Now, all of you, at this point of time, everybody is fully on board, not going to do it. Why would I do some, such a stupid thing? Every year, there are at least one or two cases. In September, everybody sits like this, and they're all as smart as you, as bright as you, exactly like you. And yet, every year, normally in the second semester, there are one or two cases. So something happens to people like you which tempts you towards taking shortcuts, right? Don't do it. And believe me, each one of you is vulnerable. And I'm, I'm saying this from experience, right? Um, this is not to frighten you, but this is a fact of life. Everybody, each one of you is potentially vulnerable to do this. Don't. It's just not worth it. Okay, in this university, plagiarism is a disciplinary offense. Any student who commits the offense is liable to disciplinary action. Um, it is disappointing to witness an increase of plagiarism in the university at both undergraduate and graduate level. So this is a fairly universal, I mean, this is a problem that's growing across the university. Um, everybody takes it seriously. We take it especially seriously. Okay, now you may think that plagiarism is a big word. Many, many syllables. Let me put it to you more simply. What does it mean? It means stealing, it means cheating, it being, means being dishonest. None of you want to do any of those things, right? So don't do it. So if you're ever tempted, tell yourself, do I want to steal somebody else's work? Do I want to cheat 
at an assignment, and do I want to be dishonored? Yes, Ariel. I have a question about mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. When I've taught in the past, mm -hmm. our criteria for plagiarism means taking four words from a source without quotation mm -hmm. and copying them without attribution. In other words, you can use a quotation as long as you source it or annotate it, and you can indirectly quote a source um, if you once again attribute the information or the ideas to the proper source. But my question is, what is the criteria here? Is it four words? Is it more than four words? It, it, was, people get confused sometimes as to what it exactly means, and that's what I wanted to clarify. Let, let me give you, that's wonderful. Thank you for the question. I'm gonna give you an example now. And plagiarism is increased across the university, and you need to write a story on plagiarism. So you go, you talk to a couple of people, got your stories, and then you remember, oh, my instructor said, somewhere I need to explain in clear language what plagiarism is. So how do I do this? Hmm. Thank you, AJ. You go to the source of all learning in our modern age, Wikipedia, and you do plagiarism, which I have not spelled well, but Google being Google has understood exactly what I mean. That, by the way, is a quote from Anjani over there. Uh, she's not there, okay. And I say, ah, this is simple. I think I know what. Okay, let me just take this, and I will copy it, and I will paste it, and let me make this a wee bit bigger. Ah, thank you, okay. So you can't see this, I need to make this a little bigger. Why don't I? See this? Make it even bigger. Ha <laughs> ha, what fun. We get bigger and bigger. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, so Wikipedia says, plagiarism is the wrongful appropriation and purloining and publication of another author's language, thoughts, ideas, or expressions, and the representation of them as one's original work. So you say, hey, this is a pretty good definition, but I don't want to commit plagiarism. And if I just put this, I'm gonna get caught. So let me change it a little bit. Hmm. Okay, so I say plagiarism, I'll take out the inverted commas. Um, appropriation's a big word, but you know, I've been taught to write simply, so I say wrongful use. Um, I'll take out this stuff of another author's and hey, this is getting a little long, so maybe I'll just cut a little bit of that. And I will say, and passing it off. Oops. As one's original work. Okay, so now I've changed it a little bit, right? Um, I don't think I'm gonna get caught. I think this is fair. So what do you guys think? Is this plagiarism or not? Okay, Steffi, you say yes. Why? 
you are nodding wisely. Why? Sorry? Uh, the main idea of how it's expressed is being put in the same way. Okay, there's n basically there's no significant changes. Somebody else's words that you've just changed a wee bit. Would you agree with me or do you think this is, this is enough to pass as your original work? Well, you have done something to it and you've decided what shall I cut, cut out, what shall I leave in, uh, what words shall I use? You've simplified some of this. Is that enough for this to be original? What do you guys think? No? Okay, there's one nodding. Uh, what do you guys think? Each one of you has to have an opinion on this. All right. Okay, so Wendy here says this is paraphrasing without attribution. Actually, use the mic when you speak so, so everybody can, uh, can, it's okay now. Any other thoughts on this? How many of you think this is acceptable? Don't worry, I won't hold this against you. Nobody will hold this against you. You're young and innocent. <laughs> yes, Corey. Sorry, you, you, you think it's wrong or? I, I, I don't think it's wrong. You don't, why don't you think it's wrong? I'm not saying it, it's wrong. It, it, it seems to me like this definition of plagiarism is sort of common knowledge. So in my opinion, it's nothing that's quite unique and that would warrant attribution. Okay, so I, th I think this is, this is really an interesting point. This is, he says this is common knowledge. For example, if you have to write about Hong Kong and you say Hong Kong, you need to know the population of Hong Kong and you look up anyway and say Hong Kong has a population of 6.8 million, right? Um, and you can, this is common knowledge. You probably don't have to attribute it each time you talk about the population of Hong Kong. And so maybe, you know, facts you can use like that. And you are saying that perhaps this falls in the same sort of category. This is well known, so why do we have to attribute it? How many of you think Corey is right? One, two, three, four, five, six. How many of you think he's wrong? Seven. How many of you think he's wrong? One, two, three. Sorry? Depends where you get your facts from. How many of you have no opinion? And that is, this is not allowed, <laughs> okay? There are too many no opinions. You've got no opinion. Okay, actually this is allowed if you can explain why you have no opinion. Okay. Yeah, it, it seems to me that there's a difference between what happens if I'm asked to write a thesis that upholds academic standards and if, on the other hand, I'm write, asked to, ask, to write a text that would um, be publishable in a newspaper as part of the course, because a newspaper wouldn't have the same exact methodology for attributing um, sources. That seems to me as something that can yeah. be complicated. I would disagree with you straight away because I think we have equal rigor in terms of, because that's what the public needs to know. And, and you know, we need to be equally rigorous um, in terms of attributing um, sources. You can make that argument, but I would say that I, I wouldn't agree with you there at all. Um, we had a couple of hands up there. Yes, Pietro, and then uh, Aaron. Um, this may be just a question, but um, would that matter where you are copying from? If uh, Wikipedia is, is basically knowledge in public domain, if you do this off Wikipedia, um, it's kind of understood probably that it's out there and you can use it. So, as opposed to, let's say, quoting a newspaper article or an ac academic article. I, yeah, okay, I think it would matter. I mean, some things, facts, figures, what is the capital of China, you don't need to say Beijing is the capital of China according to Wikipedia. But that is knowledge that is in the public domain, right? But I think this would fall, this is really, I mean, definitions, these are not things that are set in stone either. Um, and I think that comes back to your question as well. Of, I mean, certain things are indubitably in the public domain. Others, I think, are much more in a gray area, and I would put this in a gray area. Yes, Erin, I think you've had your hand um, up. Yeah, I was a philosophy major as undergrad, so we're taught that words and definitions are always changing, so especially if your story is gonna stand the test of time. Hmm. And sometimes your perspective may seem obvious to you, but within that perspective, there's certain you know views and concepts that say someone reading the story across the world might not necessarily understand, so it's good to attribute. 
I would say in things like this, always attribute. Let's go back, um, that first slide, I'm not gonna go back to it, but basically using unacknowledged thing. Now if you want to use the Wikipedia definition, there's a very easy way to do it if you think. Right? That's all you need to do. You need to attribute. Don't steal. Somebody, uh, I'll come to you in a minute, Daniel. Uh, um, somebody else has written this entry at Wikipedia. You didn't write it, right? Somebody's written it. Somebody has edited it. Why are you taking this as your own work, making a few small changes, and then pass? This is like a forger. I mean, you look at Picasso and hey, I can do that, right? <laughs> and you produce something, and then you scroll. Pablo Picasso across it, right? Or this way, whichever way it's done. Um, it doesn't work, right? So attribute, you know, s scholarship, journalism, it's all based on facts that other people are already telling you. All you need to do is attribute it, right? So one is attribution. Number two, learn to write in your own language. Use your own words. Switch your brain on, right? Whoever is reading you, whether it's a blog or whether it's a newspaper, is not paying to read Wikipedia, right? They're paying to read you and your thoughts and your words, right? So do that. This tends to happen always in the second semester when people get more and more stressed. You take shortcuts. Don't do it. If you're in doubt, just, okay, you read the plagiarism definition, okay? And you think, all right, I think I understand what it means. Let me put that definition away. Let me write it in my own words. That's one option. Option two is, according to Wikipedia, Wikipedia defines plagiarism as da 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 da. Both ways you're safe. This way is the worst of both worlds. You've tried to make a little bit of change, but it's still clearly the Wikipedia definition. You are cheating. Okay? Sorry, uh, somebody had a hand up there, I think. And, um. and, and, and you had a hand up as well. And then I'll, finally, I'm going to ask Ariel whether this meets her. Uh, okay, yeah, I also have an extended question that mm -hmm. maybe in academic perspective, this is called plagiarism, but uh, it seems to me that it's a fact that many media, uh, for the same event, many media have very similar coverage. Is that plagiarism? I mean, is no, it that, uh, that, 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 is, that is known as groupthink. Journalists tend to work in herds, like big herds of animals. Everybody tends to write in the same way. And that is a separate issue. It's not necessarily cheating, but we all tend, the news media tends to write in exactly the same way. So if you have 10 journalists covering one event, you'll probably get very identical stories. So they're not necessarily feeding off each other's work, but they're thinking in the same way, which is another problem that you yeah, have. Yeah, uh, but more than like mm -hmm. thinking in the same way, I mean, uh, I'm from mainland China, mm -hmm. and for many times, if, if some event happens, and the website reports are really so close, uh, so sane, you know, like they just change, like what you did, just change a few words. Is that plagiarism? I, I would say that is plagiarism, right? Um, yeah. And it depends where. Now, it, if this is an official press release and the website has no choice but to publish the whole thing, well, you can forgive that. But if they're trying to cut corners, no. Okay? Okay, thank you. I have two quick questions. One is about press releases exactly. So we're taking quotes and things like that out of press releases which you're supposed to keep exactly the same, but you're not usually going to or should you reference a press release, which seems odd. Um, and the second one is about plagiarism of imagery. Um, are there set rules, I didn't see exactly in the booklet, about um, images that are modified, which seems to be the big thing online now. How much of an image is still yours if someone's taken it, modified it, changed it, added filters and so forth and made it almost unrecognizable? Okay, I'll answer the first one that, because um, um, uh, that is fairly easy. In terms of press releases, once more, I would always attribute, I mean, if company, if, if, if HSBC is giving a press release on its earnings, on new management and so on, always say this is what HSBC is saying, right? Um, now, do you need to say this is according to a pre HSBC press release? It depends on whether you're quoting verbatim. If you're quoting verbatim, then you would say according to a press release from HSBC, la 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 la. If you're paraphrasing it, once more you would attribute it to HSBC, but maybe you can use your own language. 
right? Uh, the question of, of, of mashing images and so on and so forth, I think that's, that's really interesting. Um, and I think that's the sort of thing that Doreen really would, uh, maybe over lunch you could talk to her about it, you know, in terms of copyright and changing images and so on. Okay, now, um, by Monday, um, I want you all to have read the booklet. We've started a small discussion on this and handed those pieces of paper back um, to, to Jason. Uh, there's also, uh, I'll come to you in a minute, there's also a second piece of paper that you have on IT policy, and I would like um, you to read that as well. But before that, we will have a, a small, um, talk on uh, a very brief introduction to the IT team and the IT rules and regulations. Yeah. You had it. S sorry, just a quick question. Um, I understand we'll probably work in groups. Now, let's say we're working in a group and one of the group members partakes in plagiarism. Uh, to what extent are we to be accountable for that? Um, so I know in the real world, of course, we're accountable, but let's say someone from country A gets information from the language from country A. How are we to gauge how far the plagiarism goes? You know, if you do group work, you may work in groups, but ultimately the work that you turn in, for example, um, if you're doing reporting and writing, you may go in a team of two to three people to report an event, but you'll be producing your own reports at the end of the day. Uh, does that answer your question? There's very little, uh, there are some presentations and so on, which you may do as a group, but even if you work in groups, ultimately the end product is something that, 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 that is your own. Um, um, the exception, of course, would be your video course and documentary courses, but plagiarism rarely enters into, 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 into that area, okay? So, all right, so without further ado, I would like to hand you over to our tech team for a quick introduction. Oh, um, all right, okay. All right. Um, Um, hello again. Uh, I'll be very quick. I am also chairing the technology committee at JMSC. And there are certain things you should know. We have three computer labs that are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week for our journalism students. Um, they are called uh, Digital Media Lab, DM Lab, we call it, and also Elliot Hall 201 Computer Lab. Uh, DM Lab has 24 iMacs. Um, EH201 is a Windows-based computer lab. So we have uh, Dell computers with Windows 8, I believe. Um, we also have new post-production suite. We ordered 10 um, iMacs for that room, and it should be ready by mid-September for you to use to edit videos and stuff. Um, if you, uh, how many of you do not use Facebook, by the way? <coughs> okay, um, just two of you. Okay, all right, um, probably it's a good idea to create an account. <laughs> I mean, if you are in journalism, I mean, Facebook is something that you cannot avoid. Even if you don't use it personally, you're gonna need it professionally. So it's a good idea to start familiarize yourself with Facebook interface. But anyway, if you are using Facebook, please uh, like our JMSC Equipment Office page. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying that because we need more fans because we need you to read all the regulations we posted on the page. So if you click that, for example, Asia, can you click continue reading? Yeah, uh, maybe, con uh, yeah. Um, you know uh, all the regulations. It is open all the time, but having said that, during daytime, there are classes going on in DM Lab. For example, I'm teaching undergrads online journalism course on Thursday morning for three hours. When the lab is in session, obviously you're not allowed to go in and use those computers. So most of the time, Monday through Friday during daytime, there's always something going on in the DM lab. So it's in the evening afterwards where you can freely go in and use those computers for your assignments. And to get into these three rooms, you need to have your student ID card. And Jason just told me that you are getting your cards on Saturday. September 7th. Um, I know some of you may not 
be able to make it. But if you miss that time slot, then you can only get your card on 16th, which might be a disadvantage. So if you can, please get your cards uh, on Saturday. And in the following week, that's the second week of September, um, AJ and another tech member, Horace, will come to, that's Horace, oops, sorry. Yeah, 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 he's a very important person for you to know, right? If you have any like card access problem, he's the guy to talk to, right? Um, so in Ariel's online journalism class, Horace and AJ will come in at the beginning of uh, your lecture and collect your student ID cards and we will give you permission um, uh, then. So at the end of that class, you will get your student ID cards back, and afterwards you can uh, access to those rooms freely, right? So it's a good idea to get your cards on seventh. Right? If not, let us know. Then maybe we can uh, give you permission later after you get your student ID cards. Um, that's pretty much it. And please read the regulations. Um, maybe equipment. Right, and for many of the production-related uh, courses, like uh, uh, video production, online journalism, um, uh, AJ, can you, okay. Okay, uh, yeah, th this one will do. Right, uh, we also have a website, yeah, eoequipmentoffice.jmsc.hku.hk. And here, we tell you what sort of equipment we have, and they're all packaged. So when you get those kits, for example, JVC 600 basic kit, you get everything, and you have to return everything. You cannot just say, well, I don't need a tripod, I just need a camera. Uh, unfortunately, um, that's not how we work, right? So if you get a package, you get the package, and you return the package together, right? Right, so all those details are on the website and also on the Facebook page. And the important thing is, can you go up? The office hours? Right. Office hours? Right, and also, there's a passage about when they have to email. Regulations? Regulations, maybe? Check out regulations and policies. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. All right, um, every semester we have issues with this. So I would like to uh, discuss right now that we have specific office hours, right? Monday through Friday, 10 to one, and uh, equipment office staff have a lunch break, and in the afternoon, 2.30 to 6.30, right? Saturdays, it's closed. But we do have Saturday courses, and AJ sometimes help those courses. So if you book in advance, then it's possible to get your gears. But normally, Saturdays and Sundays and public holidays, we are closed. So be aware of that. And also, if you look at, uh, read through the regulations, if you want to get your gears on... Okay, well, you we have to read it. <laughs> All right, basically, there's a specific instruction uh, you have to follow to get your gear. So if you're gonna get it on Monday, you have to email our staff on by the end of like Thursday evening or something like that. It's all um, written on the regulations, so please visit and read. And, and with that said, well, I know Case told you about that we have those gears. Um, and you don't have to worry about buying, but if you are really interested in getting your own gears, which we also recommend in a way, because you know it's much easier if you already know how to use your camera, how to use, how to shoot videos with your own stuff, and whatever assignments you are getting, you can just go out with your own stuff, right? So if you need any help or advice on which gear you wanna, uh, you know, you wanna buy, then please let us know, and we can help you which model, specific model suits your need, right? Um, lastly, I want to introduce our tech, uh, tech members. Um, AJ, you've already met. 
forest I just mentioned, and probably yeah, if you guys could. Hello everyone, I'm Roy from the equipment office, and uh, Kitty and I will be handling your request on uh, tracking of the equipment. So uh, write down our email address first, because uh, a lot of students mix it up. We do not use uh, at hku.hk, we use jmsc tag tzh at gmail.com. Do not send an email to hku.hk because we can't get your email. And uh, just in case if you want to shoot your video or check out your equipment in early morning, we suggest you pick it up the day before because we open at 10. Actually, we come at 9, but we have to prepare the equipment for you guys. So uh, if you want to go out for shooting at the very early morning, you have to get your equipment the day before. So you send us an email a bit earlier, tell us uh, what you need and when you are going to pick it up. And uh, normally you can have it for three days, but uh, if you're going to check it out on Friday, and then you can keep using it until Saturday, Sunday, and return it on Monday. Yeah, if there's any public holiday in between, then we, you get a one more day extension. Um, yeah, that's it. And our office is at uh, Ellie Hall, G21. This is at the ground floor and the uh, right hand side corner. We will show you a video later on because we will keep updating the Facebook page and the uh, uh, website. Uh, we will post some tutorials, some links to our course website, and uh, some maybe some funny stuff later on. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Kitty. Uh, I work with Roy in the e EO, we call it now. Um, pretty much Roy cover everything. Okay, all right. Well, so you're going to be seeing Roy and Kitty probably all the time during the semester. So please be nice to them. <laughs> all right, uh, last but not least, uh, we also have Foon, who is taking care of all those web stuff that we do. So if you have any questions, web-related questions, he might be the person you want to talk to. All right, and uh, right, and Eddie is currently shooting us, and he is the video producer at JMSC, and we do lots of video production services for you know uh, other departments on campus, and he is in charge of that kind of video production, so he's an expert, right? Um, Jason just told me that these regulations are already in your packet the envelopes that you're getting or you've got already so please read uh, through them and just like Roy said we're gonna be putting lots of tutorial videos on this Facebook page and our websites this uh, throughout this semester so that's another place that you can go to if you have any questions how to use video camera for example all right thank you very much